Welcome to this week's episode of The Fitness Solution. And on the other end of the line, coming to you live from Toronto, I have one of my mentors and coaches and all-round top dog and fantastic man. It's uh, Jason Maxwell. Say hey, Jason. Hey, what's going on, dude? Uh, I love how I, you called me top dog. You're the first <laughs> person to ever call me top dog. So you'll have a special place in my heart for that. Oh, it must be an English, an English thing, eh? Um, oh, that's a Canadian thing, eh? Oh, is it? yeah, of course it is. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, I got Jason onto the podcast today because we kind of connected about two months ago when everything was shut, everything was in lockdown, and I was getting lots of messages, and I'm sure Jason was, um, about how to kind of maintain your body in this period of lockdown, being at home and stuff. And in the UK, we're going to be locked down probably a little bit longer than elsewhere. So Jason's a muscle expert and there's, and he's also a rocket scientist, but I'll let him explain all of that to you. And uh, I thought we'd get on here and just chat about how best to look after ourselves in these situations physically to maintain muscle and then also reintegrating ourselves back into the gym and into fitness and stuff like that. So Jason, a quick introduction about who you are and what you do. Yeah, for sure. So it's so funny that you mentioned the the rocket scientist thing. So I, I would say I'm a former rocket scientist because that I, I went to school for aerospace engineering and, you know, I realized there was so much more out there and I had to follow my passion, which ended up being fitness. So something completely unrelated, um, unless I'm helping like astronauts maintain their muscle while in space, <laughs> which would actually relate to this podcast it really, would, really right? well. Um, and so I run uh, on Instagram. I, I blew up my my online fitness business. You can find me on Instagram at JMax Fitness just to kind of see uh, what I'm all about. But um, since then, published two books, uh, have completely shifted my business online. And then since then, I've actually joined the Personal Trainer Development Center, and we're looking to to blow that up. So I I think I. If you actually really look at me, I went from aerospace engineer, a rocket scientist, to fitness professional, to online fitness professional, to uh, business fitness professional, uh, which is what I am right now. Um, so, you know what? I, I I would say I'm more of a marketer now than than anything, um, which is kind of funny. That's that's great. I- I, I just, I need to question the way you phrase things because you're a rocket scientist and now you're talking about blowing stuff up. Be careful. People will come after you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ho- hopefully the, uh, the wrong people don't listen to this, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, that's all right. My reach isn't that great. So I, I think you'll be safe. So don't worry. Okay. Thanks. You never know. And could it's be pl- that, could be that one guy, like may- maybe our phones are tapped right now. You never know. You never know. But you're on a plain white background. It's cool. They won't find you. Um, I'm sure. Uh, No, great. So I'm sure when all this kicked off, if I I know you kind of stepped away, she moved into elsewhere, but I was getting lots of questions. I know lots of other fitness professionals were, and I saw loads of posts about it on Instagram, all about how do I maintain my muscle? Am I going to lose all my gains? Am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? And like, there's no better person to go to than a guy who literally wrote the book called Muscle. Um, So what's the facts? Like, how, how do people keep after their body? How do they keep their muscular definition? How do they keep looking after themselves during losing basically the ability to lift a, a you know, 70 pound or 150 pound barbell, whatever it might be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so funny because to, in order to build muscle, it's, it's very hard. That's actually one of the most inefficient things you can do for your body. And because it's so inefficient, it's very hard to do and your body resists it. That's building muscle. But if you already have muscle, it's actually very easy to maintain it. Now, a lot of people are locked down. They're like, they, they start to think, oh, wow, it's, it's going to be so hard. But you can honestly maintain your, your muscle with just your body weight, even during this like prolonged period. But I think where a lot of people are going to be messing up during this period is the fact that they, they're stuck at home and their their life is completely changed and then they don't have a schedule and because they don't have a schedule it's that's the that's probably the worst thing because that's actually going to stop you from even working out because you you're going to lose all motivation so the first problem here isn't how to maintain it like physically and what to do in the workouts the first problem is actually building the habit to actually dedicate to 
maintaining the muscle. Because if you don't do that, even you could have the best play in the world, but it's, it's not going to do anything for you if you're not actually executing on it. So, you know, I know this is, this is more of a mental game than anything. Because once we get into the actual, like, workouts and, and what you should be doing to maintain it, that's the easy part. The hard part is, you know, setting yourself a routine, getting up every day and figuring out, you know, when am I going to train and then actually doing it and, and being consistent with it. So I think in this time, what I found personally and what I found with a lot of different people I've been sp speaking to is if you have a set time every single day where you do some kind of movement where you know, okay, this is what I have to do at this time and you actually do it every day, it makes it a lot easier than saying I'm going to work out like on Monday and Friday this week. So that's one thing that's, that's very helpful. Another thing too is I recommend trying to go to bed and trying to get up at the same time every single day. If you can do this, that's going to really start your routine and end your routine. Because routine is very important. You can't let that go out the window. Um, or else like you're going to be like some people, like I was talking to my girlfriend. She's like, yeah, it's just been so hard to work out. Like I'll, I'll go to work out at home. And then next thing I know, I'm, I'm checking my email for half an hour. And I don't, I don't know what happened. Like I started thinking about things. But if you treat it as if you have an appointment, treat it as if you're going to the gym and, you know, turn off your phone and say, okay, at this time, like 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm going to work out. And you just do that every day and you build that habit. It's going to take one to two weeks to build that a habit. But once it's a habit, then you can be consistent with it. So your workouts don't need to be super intense. But the whole idea is you do need to get some movement because a lot of people, they're just laying on the couch watching Tiger King. And the only thing that's getting a workout here is their mouth from eating Doritos. The Doritos are tasty though. Yeah. You know what I tried actually the other day for the first time? It was um, spicy Cheetos. Right. I, nice. I don't know if you've had those, but they're, they were awesome. Yeah. We don't get Cheetos in the UK. Oh, okay. Um, you don't, you don't get them as they don't come or you just, you guys just don't get them the same way we don't get m mushy peas. <laughs> <laughs> no, as in, as in they're really hard to like purchase. Oh, um, to attain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could get them if you imported them or Amazon probably have them. But uh, yeah, they're not, they're not like in the supermarket. Not that anyone could go to the supermarket in the UK. But yeah, um, let's, let's talk about carbs, although carbs are, are amazing. Um, I mean, what you say about routine is really interesting because I've, I've gone through a couple of different phases of my routine during lockdown. Like when it first started, I was on holiday, so I was very relaxed. Then when um, we got back, I was kind of like back into kind of a work routine, which was really nice. And then I had to you go. You guys somewhere. left somewhere to go on holiday? No, we. It, it kind of all kicked in as we were just about coming home from holiday. Um, it was kind of like the week it, it, in the UK lockdown all kicked off on the Sunday, and we got back on like the Saturday um, before it all kicked off. But things were winding up, and people were talking that way and stuff like that. So, so mm -hmm. that was quite nice. But then we, I kind of had a few days back at home, and then I had to go elsewhere because my fiance is a paramedic. And we didn't want to risk me picking up from her going to work because of my heart condition. And um, so I, I lived at my parents and my routine went completely out the window and my fitness went completely out the window. And ever, like it was it was a nightmare. I was going to bed at midnight, maybe one o'clock in the morning. I was watching Netflix or I was, you know, and Tiger King is very good, but it's not worth staying up to one o'clock in the morning for. And, right. and my routine completely slipped through my fingers. And it was amazing the effect it had on my tiredness, amazing the effect it had on my, my nutrition, everything, and, and just how focused I was with work. Um, and it's a really important point. But what strikes me most about what you say is it's, it's kind of no different to like, if we were still going to the gym, right? Like your routine is king. It's still paramount. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, the, that, that's the beauty of it. And I think that's where a lot of people miss a mark. Even when people are going to the gym, a lot of people will skip their workout because they don't schedule it in and treat it like an appointment. Like if you have a dentist appointment or a doctor's appointment, you don't just not show up because you don't feel like it. Like you, you show up for that appointment and you got to treat your workouts as if it's the same way, regardless if we're in lockdown or not. I just find when we are in lockdown, that's when that routine is much 
more beneficial and much more important because you're stuck with yourself. You're stuck in your mind and your mind is very good at talking you out of doing things that you don't want to do, especially if you sit in it long enough. Yeah. Why is that? Why are we better at keeping an appointment with an external force rather than an appointment with ourself? Ah, connection unstable. I think, cool yeah, is it stable now? Yeah, it's fine. Good. Yeah, I think, I think the way humans work is a lot of people care more about what other people think of them than how they care about how they judge themselves. And as humans, that, that is a fundamental flaw that we have. It should be we should be holding ourselves accountable in a way that we don't need to depend on other people. So the person whose judgment you should care about the most isn't the doctors. It isn't the dentist. It isn't your personal trainer. It isn't your spouse. It isn't your kids. It isn't your mother. It isn't your grandmother. It isn't your grandfather. It isn't your great, great, great grandfather that lives down the street behind the post office. No, it's yourself. It's yourself. That's the person that you need to look up to. And that's the only person that you should allow to judge yourself. And with that being said, you need to judge yourself and actually control yourself and actually not act every single day as if you don't want to disappoint yourself who is looking down on you. So it's almost like you're splitting yourself into two consciousnesses. This is going deep. It is, man. I love it. I love it. This is what the fitness solution is all about. <laughs> it's, about um, it's about splitting your objectivity and your subjectivity, isn't it? Mm-hmm, exactly. And then it's, it's very hard to do. And maybe it, it takes, you know, some deep mindset work and really looking at what's going on. But at the end of the day, you, you got to hold yourself accountable and you got to do things for you. And you got to do things so that you don't disappoint yourself, too. Yeah, And if you can go to bed at the end of the day, telling yourself like, okay, or not telling yourself, but looking back at your day and being like, wow, I love the way I acted today. I'm very proud of everything that I did today and how I handled everything. Then that I would say that's, that's true freedom. That's true happiness. You know, if you can go to bed every single day, looking back, being like, wow, I acted exactly how I want today. Like that then you know you're doing something right. Yeah, I remember when we first started working together and you sent me that uh, document I had to fill out that was like my, my vision for who I was going to be in like a year or two years' time. Um, mm-hmm. I can't remember what you call it. Is it your, your ultimate plan or your big plan? Um, the big picture exercise. That's it. And, um, and it, was, it was the first time I actually felt myself, judging myself objectively based on my future self. And I was like, if I can achieve all of this, then I know I will be that person you just described in, your, in the last thing you just said. Um, and it's a very odd feeling when you kind of step away from yourself and you see yourself looking at yourself. It's a very uncomfortable feeling because of all the emotions of unhappiness and unease and the fact that I'm, I'm a person who's very used to letting myself down all of the time. And um, it's, it is a very uncomfortable feeling. It's, it took me a while to to get comfortable with it, even to me a while to send it back to you, to share it with you, like to be that open because it is quite an exposing feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And a a lot of us, we, we like, we like to be comfortable, but sometimes you got to be uncomfortable to, to really truly be happy with your life. Like it's, it's, it's kind of funny. Like, we, I, I believe we should all be growing and growing in, in whatever way. Like it could be growing within our mind, could be growing with our, with our bodies and, and, you know, building our bodies and, and, and taking after our health. But I think as, as humans, it's a fundamental need for us to actually grow. And in order to grow, we have to be uncomfortable and, and sometimes face the facts. Yeah. 
absolutely um and it's it's very hard to own up to those facts it's very hard whether you're trying to build muscle lose weight whatever it is build a business whatever it is mm-hmm. what kind of strategies would you like try and get people to implement in order to keep themselves accountable how would you get someone to stay rigid on what they're doing i would say look at so the day before so today is what tuesday so mm. Monday evening, when, when I finish my day, I, I will write down what I want to accomplish the next day and kind of plan my whole day out the next day so I can sleep on it and not have to think about it the next day because mm-hmm. um, that takes up some energy. And then in the morning, I would, I would recommend waking up at the same time every day and then going to bed at the same time every day. And then in the morning, um, what I do personally, which I think really helps me stay motivated, is all I'll journal in my journal, I'll write, okay, what are three things that I'm grateful for today? And it could be like three huge things. It could be some small things. It could be things in between. Like today, one of the things I wrote was the, the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix. Is it good? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I need to watch it. Another thing. Yeah. Another thing I wrote was, you know, my warm bed and then something else like just really thinking about you know you know i'm so grateful to have this like you could be so grateful to have that blue water bottle that keeps your water perfectly cool and keeps you hydrated you know hydro flask if you're watching if you're listening i'll, I'll take the sponsorship payment later <laughs> yeah yeah cod so, i mean what i find with people who um who i ask to give gratitude for and stuff like that i think they always think it has to be epic they always think it has to be Oh, you know, well, I give gratitude for, for my, my fiance or my girlfriend, or I'm really grateful for the fact that someone said they love me today and things like that. And it, I think they almost took themselves out of giving gratitude, but just small things every day or, or just normal things every day, because they think the act of writing something, something in terms of gratitude down each day, it has to be something so big and so grateful. You should always be almost humbled by it. And that's just not the case. I find the most effective things I'm grateful for each day is the, the real small things. Like just the fact I heard a bird sing today or, or just the fact that my headphones worked all day or something like that, you know. And, and both have extreme value in a very different way, don't they? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's with that practice of doing it daily, you get better at, at noticing the smaller things. And then that allows you to live your life much with, with much more contently, like being content with what you have. Um, after I write those three things, because it literally takes like a minute, yeah. maybe two minutes, then I'll write um, three brags. So brags okay. about myself, like they're basically they're affirmations. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like shunned in society to brag to other people, but who's the best person to brag to yourself? So that's going to give you confidence because when you have, once, once you're grateful, I, I, I think that allows you to be more calm and appreciate what you have. And then when you do the brags, now you're confident, you're adding confidence on top of that. And I think um, gratitude with confidence is actually going to help you stay motivated, especially when you add in this third thing, which is direction. So then I'll write three things that would make today amazing. So I'll write the three things and usually one of them is one thing I want to do, maybe two things I want to do. And then one way I want to act that day and so on and so forth. So this morning, um, an example of this is I wanted to make sure that I, I meditate today. Um, I, I hit my calories and then I had something with work I wanted to get done this morning. So I wrote that down. I was like, if I, If I just get these three things done today, I'm going, it's going to make it an amazing day. And already after you do those three things, the gratitude, the brags, the, the direction, the three things that are going to make today amazing. Now you're ready to start your day and you're going to be much more motivated. And if your most important thing that day is to work out, I would say now it's time to work out, put your phone away work out. You have the best willpower at the start of the day. So Mm -hmm. let's get with it and do it. And it's, it's so funny because it sounds so stupid. If you've never done something like this before, it's like, is this really going to help me? 
but it's the mindset work and doing that every single day that is actually going to help you get to where you want to be and help you make these right decisions. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's huge. I, what I often find when I hear people like you talk like this um, and talk about these things is what you, you like, you're, you're so successful. And, and I had a similar chat with um, Jordan Syatt about it as well the other day. And it's like, they're writing down, you're writing down three or four things and you're nailing it every single day. And it's the accumulation of that every single day that adds to your success. Whereas I think a lot of people think, well, if they go to work, and they're doing an eight hour block of work and they, they have to try and get like 15 things done in a day or they have to try and get 30 things done in a day or whatever. I think when you step away and like, I'm only giving myself three things to nail each day, that's not enough. People think it's just not enough to get done. Yeah. If you have a ton of things that you have to do at the end of the day, you're never going to feel like you did anything. Mm. And then it's just going to screw with your mind because you're going to feel like a failure. So I'd rather set myself up to be, have small successes and then feel like a successful person by the end of the day, than feel like a failure each and every day at the end of the day. Like that's not a great way to live your life and it's not a great way to, to grow. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, 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 yeah, I, I, know, I know you've got to run in a little bit. We've had a really good chat and discussion, but it's just one thing that my drama school teacher used to say to us every day. And he said, what I want you to do here at drama school, in, in fact, in life, is fall in love every single day. All you have to do is fall in love every day. And if you can do that, you're going to stay inspired. You're going to produce good work and you're going to be a good person. And that's what I think this is about. That's what I think gratitude is about. That's what I think nailing like three actions every day is about. That's what I think bragging to yourself is about is you're just giving yourself other opportunities to fall in love with something every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it keeps your mind open to, to, to falling in love. Yeah. And you can only fall in love if you are open. Yeah, man. That's, what a great note to finish on you can only fall in love if your mind is open mm -hmm. exactly i know we didn't get to talk about the the workout stuff but honestly yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna leave it here it's it's very simple um i i believe just train your full body every single day um with with movements that'll hit your whole body and it doesn't need to be a lot but you just need to challenge yourself so you know honestly like if you have no equipment push-ups, lunges. I would crawl on the floor, but not letting your knees touch the floor, um, doing some kind of planks. And uh, if you can, like, ideally, it's, it's nice to have something that you can pull. So like filling a backpack up with books and doing rows with that or something like that. Like if we can push and pull and then and train the legs in, in that regard and then train the core, then we're going to maintain most of our muscle. And yeah. any muscle that we lose, we're going to gain back. As soon as we get back into the gym, it's going to take like a month. Yeah, a month of consistent work. Uh, as long as you've been consistent while you're not in the gym. Um, yeah, that's great. Another great uh, pull exercise is a door jam uh, row. So just line yourself up in a door, in a door jam. Hold on to the door and just pull yourself in towards the door and away from the door. Because um, you have the hole in which you can, can work in. Um, if you can't fill up a, a bag oh, I like of books. That. Yeah, it's a good exercise I came across. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's wonderful. Thanks so much for your time today, Jason. And thanks for coming on to The Fitness Solution. Where can everyone get a hold of you or get in touch with you if they want to? Yeah, um, easiest place is just give me a follow on Instagram at jmaxfitness. If you want to build muscle and you want to work out in the gym, I would grab a copy of my book, Muscle. It's just jmaxfitness.com slash muscle. Book's free. You just cover the shipping and you can read it while you're in quarantine or while you're on lockdown. And if you're not in lockdown, well, you can read it anyways and <laughs> take it to the gym and get jacked. Absolutely. It's a really good book and it's, it's got some fantastic tips in it. I got it myself and I haven't looked back since. Um, thank you so much for coming on today, Jace. <laughs> Uh, it means a hell of a lot to me. Do you give up your time and, and have a little chat with me? And it's great to see you and connect with you again. Um, feels like, yeah. yeah, it just feels like I'm chatting to my best friend again. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Great to see you, Adam. Cheers, buddy. I'll speak to you soon, man. Yep. See ya. Bye.